Stefan Gyodomot, like Land Rover, I thank you as you join us this morning. Yes, we don't come to bring you better information as it gets to do with things we concern you well. Well, today, we won't look at technology because when we look at this tech thing, tech thing, you know, so now techie is now be the reigning things now. Now, then be the reigning king. Now, then they buy the big, big properties. Now, then be the big boys in town, the Benz guys in town now. So, we won't even look at this tech industry as it gets to do with Nigeria. Wait, Nigeria get hope. I've been a hopelessness we get for this tech matter. And especially as it gets to do with startup businesses. That's not the matter where we say we want this. Because because people where we say uh, won't get interest for tech, they're supposed to shine their eye where we listen to this matter where we uh, because it is very important, make you pay attention, make you for no. And I make a bring up one get guests for inside the house. We go full of touch like the matter because he himself cajad for that era. That's gonna be after this break. I go let you in on my guest. Stay with us till they come back. <music> All right, welcome back. Nice on top. The good morning, Niger Extra. Now you day. So this morning we won't look at the topic tech innovation and startups. That is startup <coughs> businesses. Them the way we be say technology don't take grow over time and startup businesses. Waiting be the future and hope of Nigeria inside. That be the role when Nigeria get to play inside. That's not the matter we be say we won't talk. Uh, the person we be say get for inside the house. Now lawyer we be say in kajad for tech matter well well. And himself he carry startup matter for head like Galad. Sorry, like pay ready sell. He carry on for head. So now they could bring and come, make it help us explain to us what we need to know for inside this matter. Now, Barista, um, Omoruye, Edio Giawere, now I get for inside the house. I try for the name. You know, so I get to realize myself. Small, small thing remain for try well. well. I be a try you well. try well. You try. Mm -hmm. You try so well. If you be teacher. You last well, mm. they come. <laughs> <laughs> I try well. The well, well, no day. The last well will come later. Yeah, yeah. Maybe for closing, I go finish the well, well. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome, how you doing? You know, so when we talk about tech, tech, some people will say, hey, on I don't come again, no oh, Gen Z people, uh, tech. So if you help us understand what in tech mean, then we could know what in the kind of businesses will call startups first, and they will come look whether whether we get hope, a be hopelessness for inside the tech industry for Nigeria. Okay, so technology really is. Mm. Um, so tech, in a short form of technology. Yes. Okay, just so many understand. The new way of life. Mm. Right, everything we do today is driven by technology. My tab not tech, right? Yes. Oh, wow. Uh, all these lights, where they see, all the cameras, where they get us, your phone, everything. Not tech. Mm. So, what you have is that the new normal is uh, we live in a tech driven environment, a technology driven society and environment. Yeah, but this is your fine blazer, what they say, like this, not tech. Because this blazer makes sense. <laughs> not tech, not make. Not tech, like not too. Oh wow! <laughs> right. You get to be tech anyway because you tech. So mm. that's the new normal, mm. which is that everything everything we do today is driven by technology. Um, our daily lives, the decisions we take, and everything that we are doing are all tech driven, or tech monitored, or tech controlled mm. um, decisions. Um, so. When you now the, the in thing is technology and innovation, right? So when you talk of technology, you talk of innovation, right? Um, if you look at ten years before now, you would see that yes, there were cameras. Twenty years before now, there were cameras. Thirty years before now, there were cameras. But today, thirty years later, the cameras have innovated. Right, mm. they don't there have grow. been a they lot of innovation. Mm. Um, I remember that if you looked at the first, the first uh, computer that there ever was, it needed about six or seven people to move it from one point to the other. Because it's big, where right? If you look at the first hard drive, right, to store was bigger than this um, cupboard here. Mm. But today, you really don't even need anything physical anymore to mm. store information. I mean, you hear people say cloud, cloud, cloud. That's technology. Because right? they say this for sky. <laughs> they they so, move them to God. Right? Mm. Um, so that's what innovation. Innovation means the easier way to do things, um, faster way to do things, mm. more through efficient the, way to do things. Through the use of things, technology. Utilizing mm. technology. OK. So how about startup, though? When we talk about startups. So when you talk about startups, it's good that I even correct this impression here. Startups okay. are growing companies 
that leverage on technology to produce innovative products. Okay, so not be basically new right. companies, it just they come up. Yeah, so when you, yeah, because people always make that mistake, say, oh, every company is a startup. Mm. Every new company it may be a startup, mm -hmm. right? But not every new company is a startup. Oh, not be right. every new company they qualify to not become a startup. New. So if your, so if your qualify, business is not startup. if your business is not one that is technology driven, right? Or that is geared towards producing an innovative service or product through the deployment of technology, it won't qualify as a startup. Okay, so that means any business where they suppose called startup now. Business where be say um, the way we be say the user render in service or product tech get to the technology. Yeah, so it has to be a technology driven business, right? One that its objective is to produce or provide a service that is technology um, enabled and driven and that aims to provide an innovative solution. Uh, but before we right? continue, just so that we don't go confuse people, I won't mm -hmm. understand something. You've been talking earlier before now, say tech and the new way of life. Oh yeah, with so the technology. So if technology and the new way of life will be within or supposed to, then that means almost every business suppose get one form of technology or another involved so, in it. So, Have you not be so? So the distinction is mm. not business, every business relies on technology one way or the other. In fact, I always say, mm. And I think I've even, I've even said it here before, that even the Akara seller mm. today deploys some form of technology to sell. You go calling customers. Because before you know it, they are even uploading the, she, what she's frying on WhatsApp. Mm. Customers are ordering, ah, madam, do 500 naira own for me, mm. do 1,000 own for me. I go send this past con carry -am. That's technology, oh. mm. right? But what is the service she's providing and how is she providing that service? So now not a technological service should it provide. But let's also look at a company that says, you know what? We want to, we don't have any, um, we're not going to be frying Akara. But we know that everybody in Lagos likes Akara. So we're going to build a platform where we will have people on the field, we will link with dispatch riders, now you have bicycle delivery agents, right? We connect them with the producers of this Akara and also with the end users, the customers. We provide a platform, Akara Now Now. Mm. Right? You don't give us a business, business exactly. idea. Yeah. Akara exactly. Now Now. So they let it fry you. They, they don't even get business with beans. They are honored to find people mm. with it. Fry their car up, yeah, connect so them to people who want to buy their car, chain. help them deliver them. That's all. Now, what you're doing, Akara don't solve. what mm. you're doing is you're deploying technology oh, to wow. provide a solution. Oh, wow! Oh, wow! Right. So, now, how Nigeria don't you think say Nigeria don't position themselves for the tech industry? Oh, yes. So, Africa, so let me let me shock you. The world is coming back to Africa. Forget the challenges we're having with our economy with, and stuff and all that. There is a paradigm shift towards Africa and Africans and African talents. And Nigeria is the largest um, economy, largest black com country on earth. Yes. Right? The and most so, populated black nation. And, and, and mm. so we're also leading the African continent, mm. whether, whether we ha we've got our economics right or not. But there is that paradigm shift tilting towards our, in our, our talents, tilting towards our market, tilting towards our human resource capital. And so Nigeria is at the forefront of this technology revolution. Um, we, have, we have tech talents that have produced innovative products all over the world, right? From Paystack to Flutterwave. Flutterwave is now a big boy now. They've moved, you know, I'm sure they've crossed the Rubicon of uh, the startup Rubicon. Right, um, and you know, if you want to pay pay a bit of um, accolades, you talk of InterSwitch, mm. right? Michelle Legbe, when they started InterSwitch, it looked like the traditional banks said, "What are you doing? You're joking." You know, Our banks they use them now. But Almost today, all the banks they use their services. Today, now. you can't have card services without the deployment of InterSwitch, Inter mm. right? And when they thought about it, you know, when Flutterwave came with the payment gateway system and all that, traditional banks were a bit, you know, because what they had then were clearing houses and all those things, 
right? But Flutterwave came up with a more unique solution to financial transactions. And, and today, that's what the traditional banking industry are relying heavily on, so that the, technology. So these, these things where you don't mention that are the contributions in Nigeria. Oh, yeah. So these are Nigerian. Yeah, industry, so these are Nigerian in, tech in the fintech space, right? Mm. So these are Nigerians who have done. And then let's, let's bring it home. And I'm sure everyone in the studio will relate very well with Piggy Vest. Right? <laughs> um, that have Instead of incentivized, you to put your colour for house, incentivized you saving, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and created a saving culture, um, incentivizing it by giving you bonuses on your savings and, you know, um, creating new ways to help people save funds, right? Easy, accessible, and all that. That's technology. You have um, Ezra and his guys in Paystack, right? Mm. So we're doing a lot, and that's fintech. In, 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 in other sectors, um, you have university. You have um, Sim Shagaya's alternate school. Today, education has moved beyond the walls of um, the four walls of a building you know, to the digital space. Hmm. And then you're having knowledge being transferred via technology. These are things that we probably didn't think of 10 years or 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. So there has been enormous contribution by Nigerians to improving the standard of living, the ease of doing business and how things are done. Um, and globally, for instance, one of the best um, um, reminder and um, scheduling apps in the world, Calendly, is owned oh, wow. by Calendly. Nigerians. Yes, yes. Calendly, Nigeria. the Nigeria will get yes, out. Tola, and I, I didn't use, right? yeah, are you so, serious? I didn't use liaise with Google because they make them. I didn't say a Google initiative. No, I didn't say no, a Google no, get them. No, no. But so they, they use that for the whole world. Yeah, yeah. So not only for Nigeria. Yeah, all, all over the world. So in case people know, no, Calendly, now like, you know, I, I, I feel the same. Even app. like saying a schedule, you say, they help you get your time. You get something to do now. Just go your calendar. That calendar where you get for inside your phone. Eh? When you go your calendar, you just put the dates you know, fix mm -hmm. your, through your Google app, you go down, so the thing will remind you everything where you need to do. If you even fix like 10 appointments for the day, give each of them time. The calendar work now, so they remind you 30 minutes of your time, you don't remind you, say, mm -hmm. this appointment time don't reach you. So it's just like when you do reminders. Yes. So it's just like your you daily know? reminder, innovated yeah, into so technology. Yeah, so virtual assistance, oh, right? wow. Um, a couple of years ago, what you had were PAs, working with you, calling you, or reminding, reminding you. you. And that, that's still good, because mm. um, for some of us that are <laughs> in multiple, wear multiple hats, even your phone can help you. So you also need the human com component. But, right, everything is now in a mobile phone. Hmm. And you can, you can schedule meetings, you can sit on meetings, you can hold board meetings, you can review documents, you can all... Yeah, so, so looking at all these technological innovations, what do you think will go down, perhaps feel or um, help people to begin, give people the reason to begin think of all these kind of innovations and startups? Well, there's a popular saying that says, innovate or die. Mm. You don't innovate, well, you, you is the mother die. of all invention. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so let me, let, me, let, me, let me create a distinction. Uh, okay. uh, and, and it's very important that we draw this distinction. So you have business people, you have entrepreneurs, right? Mm. Both of them appear to be doing the same thing, but the end goal and the objectives are different, right? A businessman does business to make profits, cash out and move on, and does businesses that give him profit. No, but the businessman will be CEO. Well, business. Well, let's not even give, put titles to it. Uh, because right? me, I just mm -hmm. wonder now because somebody goes say, "What's the difference between?" Businessman and entrepreneur. Yeah, so if I get a business, don't be, be, I don't yeah, be an, yeah, yeah. an so, entrepreneur. So that's, so the decision is what I'm trying to create. An mm. entrepreneur identifies a problem. Mm. So sells you don't just start solution business. solution to the problem. Oh. And makes money from it. And that's where this tech and innovation have found their foundation. So whether a product-based solution yeah. or service-based solution. Service-based solution. Nah. So for mm. instance, you have child deck, right? Mm. Okay. Um, doing adverts, right? But mm. I'm just trying, because you, to drive home this point, you People really, get to understand the kind yeah, of things then, what do they Right, so you have, you have the food um, delivery um, apps mm. and platforms. So not be saying that they cook the food there. That realize that 
people, especially working class personnel, have a challenge getting qualitative food, especially within particular times. Mm. So what do you do? You go to an app. The app tells you the nearest restaurants to you and gives you the food options you want, right? And then you buy the food, you, you order on the app, and then the restaurant receives the order and ships to you through the nearest logistics person that's mm. around them, connecting that supply chain. Um, so, and a problem they don't solve. So. Yeah, so for instance, another, another thing is, okay, I travel a lot. Okay. And one of the challenges I find, especially when I'm traveling in Europe, is getting African food. Pepe. <laughs> you know, mm. that's ah. a challenge. Right? Ah, that and pepe is very important. It was, always, it was always problematic for me until I think I, I stumbled on the Uber Eats app. And I've always used the Uber Eats app, but never really, never really taken it seriously. But then you now realize that on, on that app, you can find African food. You can zero down to Nigerian food. Oh, you so can you don't say they categorized. To, you can zero down to ethnic foods. And it will tell you the nearest Nigerian restaurants in Paris, yeah, yeah, yeah. in Netherlands, in Belgium, depending wherever you are. And if there isn't, it gives you the nearest African alternative. These were problems that a businessman may not necessarily find think of. A businessman wants to open an outlet and sell to a market. An entrepreneur realizes that people like me that are always traveling around the world but have taste buds for uh, their African delicacies mm. want to survive. Mm. The type of bread and cheese, mm. right? And so you link us. Mm. So that's the foundation of all this tech and innovation that you see happening around you. Startup founders are entrepreneurs who identify these problems and provide solutions to these problems. Okay. And in providing solutions to these problems, they are making profit. They are cashing out of into the bank. Hmm. Right? What was the problem Paystack wanted to um, solve? People were having problems saving through the mainstream banks because they had challenges with interest rates. They had challenges with even accessibility and collection and all that. Right? And then people had a problem with discipline. Mm. Just so the na, discipline so of just saving. So just basically to look so for that what did they problem, do? They, then they, look for they, solutions. They, they sold you a solution by helping to incentivize the saving mm. culture. Mm. All right, so they come back. After this break, we'll go look more into the matter. I'm not going to even know whether all these tech people and then startups, so that they get any challenge, especially to do business for inside Nigeria. Because uh, business idea, if you come, but what will be the challenges we face to make sure, say, mm -hmm. you face that business, especially to grow that business to become mm -hmm. an Obongi name, as the name so you mentioned here. We'll go talk about that one after the break when they come back. Stay with us. All right, welcome back. And I'm still on top of the Good Morning Niger Extra Show. Now you're there for Inside our your Wazobia TV. And before we go on break, we'll be there to talk with Barista Omorie and with the Touch light matter we get to do with um, tech mm -hmm. startups then for inside mm -hmm. Nigeria. And uh, before we go on break, I tell you, I'm going to ask you the challenges mm -hmm. because uh, we know say where people they give better value. Challenges go. You challenge not the just everybody for them become tech, tech you know, mm -hmm. company and all that. So, mm -hmm. what's the challenge way to say tech, tech uh, uh, and startups then get for Nigeria? The business environment, knowledge. Um, we still have a challenge with the knowledge gap. There's a, there's a serious knowledge gap. Mm. Um, our That's education, people people don't know our rich. education is also problematic. Yeah, our right? school, then where would they go? Yes, our educational system How? is not technology driven. Yay. And, I, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you for a fact. Um, so my, um, my, my wife's nephew who lives with us, is studying computer and engineering. And save for the computer that we bought for him, he probably hasn't even had to use it in school. Ah, that's right? school. Never teach him rigid time when they go teach him yeah, with a real computer. Right. Uh, and a computer engineer. Uh, and, and you're competing with you're competing with jurisdictions where even from primary they've started deploying technology in their day-to-day -day living, tablets, laptops. You know, and this is very simple, right? 
Um, I'm a lawyer. Um, so even in the legal education in Nigeria today is very, very, there's very, very little on technology and innovation. Um, there's very little on even teaching budding lawyers and how to deploy technology to provide services, right? Um, there's a lot of manual processing. If you come to my firm, you hardly see books, right? We've all got our laptops and everyone is working and there are tons and tons of resources, books, encyclopedias, all in our laptops because that's the new way of operating. So plenty of books, all that. Yes, you're that. right. But the challenge is that people like us are a minute number of the larger number. And so the biggest frustration to technology and innovation is education because hmm. you're not training people to be able to rely on technology to improve things. The tech founders, that if you do a survey, or well, the tech founders who have done phenomenally well, most of them studied abroad or have a leg to the outside world or have just been diehard believers in doing things differently. So how many of these tech people were you mentioned? Unless you don't mention it, the, the couple of you know, tech uh, companies. How many of them were actually originate from Nigeria and, so most, and, then, so, and then create them no, for Nigeria, no, develop so, for Nigeria? I have, so the Piggy Vest, in fact, they are indigenously trained. They went to Covenant University, mm -hmm. um, Chigwe Joshua and Odu and Co. and all that. You know, they started that. Um, you have Paystack, you have even flutter wave. So there is a, it's a mixture. But most of them, they come be like, say, once they start off on Nigeria, they be like, say, the Nigerian environment, then they do them. Yes, so the, 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 the challenge, the challenge, way they are about the, the Nigerian the, environment. The, the challenge right? also is in the environment. Wait, right? wait, wait to be the challenge for the environment. Which is, which is even understanding the need for this technology and even being mm. able to manage it. And then we also have a major challenge, power and internet penetration. Mm. Uh, one of the biggest challenges we have to technology, right? You can only use technology so far as you won't understand how crappy the internet service you have here until you travel abroad and you check the BPS speed rate and then you realize <laughs> that you've been more or less crawling. Now, those are some of the challenges. That's, that's the way you talk. Eh? It just it just hits hard for my head. So I the you know render outsourcing customer service mm -hmm. to companies, especially mm -hmm. for uh, broad. Mm -hmm. And most of them, before they even engage your services, it is things they ask of you. One are your speed test. Mm -hmm. They don't want you to say network, don't do booting, oh, yeah. booting, booting. And then it is so really I don't want to say abysmal when you do the test for of some of our um, mm -hmm. um, uh, internets for Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Because if you see how low the internet, they kind of wonder. So yeah. that's the way you talk. Yeah. But what will feed you? All these challenges where you don't Infrastructure. Oh, wow. Infrastructure. And that's where government comes in. So beyond, beyond even creating a a, 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 uh, an enabling environment by, by um, enacting proactive laws, like the Startup Act, um, which yours truly was at the forefront of pushing for its enactment. Uh, and Buhari being being nice enough to make sure. Yeah, so yeah. So we started yeah. from the scratch. We, we, we drafted, we engaged with stakeholders, pushed at the National Assembly, and pushed for its enactment. And it's, it's been enacted. Now we are pushing for implementation. Um, because I've been wanting to say enacting the different from implementation. Oh, yes. so, now the team be say go pass the law yeah. finish. How many of laws they work in the first place? So yeah, so yeah. implementation is is where we are, and you know even though it's 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 slow, because the political will is not exactly um, as it should be, right? I mean, the government is probably still finding its feet to understand look, what does the startup act all about. But we hope it picks up as it should. But the challenge wait, we wait, have... Wait, 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 sorry, okay. I'll, I'll be wanting to repeat that to me, but it's, it's fine. The so, challenge... So, so, wait, government, no, I feel like, I'm not going to repeat, I'm in Nigeria and say, that is government, they find that difficult to understand which things start up there about. No, 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 that's not what I said, right? So, this is a new administration. I know they talk about this administration, I mean governance generally. Oh, yeah, so the biggest challenge, right? They're not the to big, understand the biggest, that. The biggest thing. challenge that startup founders have, I'm a lawyer, I'll tell you, is there is a communication gap between the regulator and the regulated. What would be the reason for that communication The regulator does not necessarily understand. So if you understand how technology works, we're in the, we're in the era of artificial intelligence, AI. 
You know why you can't have a law for AI? Because AI is so fast that before you finish enacting this law, <laughs> it has evolved. Technology is a train, right? Um, it's, mo it's fast moving and it doesn't give you the privilege not to, not to hop in. You either come in or it crushes you. The challenge is that regulators don't understand how fast paced tech and innovation is. So now who stopped them from Regulators are the typical civil service that understand bureaucracy. Hey, so you know what you make me ask you that question? They procedures, okay. which is not in itself bad, but which has to be rejigged to now realize that you are going to be dealing with a fast-paced industry that relies heavily on changing things, moving things from point A to point B, improving how things work, right? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, for instance, in the era of artificial intelligence, it's, it's so fast moving that the best you can have is a policy, mm -hmm. right? Blockchain, for instance, you have blockchain and cryptocurrency and all that. Part of the challenge that the financial industry had, uh, the regulators had at the time, but from a place of understanding. So I've been wondering, what's it make me ask you that question in the first place now? Because as you don't talk to the financial industry, you don't remind me exactly what's in what it make you ask you the question. So a particular section, make I not mention them now, um, a client, one being one, make I help them get um, approval for a particular sector within the because in real life, say that their sector they unlicensed, they need mm -hmm. to license them. Mm -hmm. So most of the people who operate under that sector, they get the they license within other jurisdictions for Africa, but not in Nigeria. But mm -hmm. they come here, they make a lot of money in Nigeria, mm -hmm. and they just with mm -hmm. those licenses and they just go. Sometimes mm -hmm. people lose money and they just go. So we go to the body we're supposed to be in charge. And we say, Oh, God, I this now this company will be one of the people that operate this business, not gonna come, come license us. Because we cannot license what we don't understand. Mm -hmm. And in my head, I'm like, why a civil servant, where they on in a place of authority, we suppose license a thing, go talk, say, I no go feel license, which I don't understand. With all the money we they give them, which mm -hmm. stop them from employing essays and PAs, we understand, we, we get the capacity to understand the thing, maybe if you explain to them. So, um, the thing they, they worry some. So, how you think, say, most of these businesses where you don't uh, discuss now, how they fit? Manage how you think they manage bits this challenge. So, so I think that I, I, I think that in fairness to government, government is now beginning to realize that there's a new economy called the digital economy. And that's why I think in the last two administrations they've had the Ministry of Digital Economy. How effective they don't right? uh, well I think the now, ministries. now that a private sector practitioner is a minister, right? Mm. He's been in CC Hub, is he has faced all these challenges that we are complaining of today. Yeah, so if, if he now on, on the seat cannot fix some of these challenges, it will be a problem. But if you look at it very honestly, um, the major thing is, like you said, they don't understand it. And there is no intentional effort to even understand where this technology is going to, what is driving the level of innovation we have, there is that comfort in the ease of doing things the way we normally know how to do it. And that's why I said the biggest challenge we have is an institutional problem. Um, if the institutions are built in a way where there is constant reorientation and drive for innovation, the individuals will either align or they will be uncomfortable with the environment. But where you have an institution that allows a lot of mediocrity, a lot of... Um, red tapism, nepotism, anyhowness, so to speak, those things reflect in our uh, output. I'll give you a very simple analogy. We have a food crisis, more, more or less, in this country. Um, and the bulk of our problem when it comes to agricultural um, challenges we have with food supplies have to do with the supply chain logistics. And if you cast your mind back to 20, 30 years ago, we had NIPOST. And NIPOST had an institutional framework across the entire length and breadth of this country where people could go and deposit their letters yes. and all yes. that. Now, that supply chain is dead. Nobody's posting anymore. 
don't right? <laughs> in fact, the little work Nipost is doing is serving as a subsidiary or an intermediary for um, a, um, foreign logistic. Where, where still get very big problem because people right. say they miss on. Which still mm. is a challenge. You know, you could receive items and now, an innovative government would look to Nipost to revamp it and now help fix that supply chain mm. for the market. But that's not happening. That's okay. not happening okay. because so, so we're in setting one, in, our in one sentence, how you think, say, these startups them use, um, manage, get their head above the water and can't they succeed? Okay. Most of them we don't... So when Quest mention. came to Nigeria, Quest, Richard Quest said something. He said, look, um, he's impressed that in Nigeria are uh, entrepreneurs, and uh, so I have startup founders, are thriving despite the absence of qualitative government support. So they just manage, just it while in other jurisdictions, bis growing businesses thrive because of government support. So now I know here, here. Uh, businesses are thriving irrespective of the absence of. So they just no grief for anybody now. We to make right. that. Manage. But that was a couple of years ago. Mm. Let's give credit to government today. The Startup Act has been enacted. The Ease of Business, uh, the uh, Business Facilitation Act has been enacted. These laws have been made to help businesses, startups grow. Um, and there have been a, a couple of incentives and supports across board. But it just has to be a more intentional effort and a belief, mm. right? You see, you can't, you can't support what you don't really believe in. A belief in the fact that technology and innovation can take us out of our quagmire today. Okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Amok could just enter a small break. When we we'll come back, I would like to know whether in the particular sectors we'll be seeing that they do well pass for inside this you know tech world. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then Mok will also know when you know other things we around that matter, but that one will be after this break when they shift back. Stay with us, my people. <laughs> All right, welcome back on Top the Good Morning Niger Show Extra. And uh, we see they talk about startups and technology for inside Nigeria. That is techs and startup for Nigeria. And as Nigeria don't use keep their body together, so make sure say them self, them follow for people who be say don't they move with this trend. And I see Gabari Samori so with me for inside the house. So Barry, I've been telling you said I've been talk say before the break, say I would like to know whether you did a particular sector for inside this, you know, whole tech issue. We be say that them be like saying that them they survive pass. You get anyone? So I I, I won't say now them the survive part. I would say that that's the trendy and easy in quote aspect for them to lean towards, and that's the fintech space. So everyone is doing fintech, and 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 I agreeably have a financial inclusion gap. Over forty six percent of Nigerians are on bank. They know their bank. They know their right? account. Mm. So what has now happened is that these entrepreneurs, these problem merchants, as I call them, have found solutions to provide some semblance of financial inclusion for this unbanked number, right? Mm. Um, and, and make money from it, right? Mm. So it looks viable because they are dealing with numbers. Mm. But there are other very viable um, aspects. Agritech, for instance. Oh, wow. Agritech um, will focus largely on our food in inefficiencies and, and, and food supply. How they want to done because I get a problem with agri-tech. I they get I pray for problem where we say they go solve one not to take you know to make sure say some crops or some fruits or some uh, produce you no know, they out of season. I hate to hear say any particular thing they out of season for Nigeria because I know say you know you know there is someone want chop mango for a brother and no go chop the mango at the chop them. How do they take down for budo but when they no go feed them? When we say we must eat seasonal fruits even though say yes but this is technology supposed to help to you know, carry yeah, come off yeah, on that side. Yeah, so that's, that's a technology challenge mm -hmm. um, that I'm sure that um, the entrepreneurs will find solutions to. But, you see, you must also understand the market and what the market is looking for. The biggest challenge we have is a failure of understanding the market and understanding what works for that market. And even in innovating, what it will cost you to bring keep an out of season fruit in season throughout the year may not be viable mm. for the markets. Mm. But if you look at if you look baseline, go to where 
they produce yam. What makes food very expensive is the supply chain, the logistics. The transportation of food, not go even knock and break and down. To so, transport food from north, pass, enter inside South right. alone, Awala. Right. So The number of checkpoints you go pass, even yeah. the bad roads then, the ones we go rotting, the right time we see truckload of things we rotting for So supply which thing chain. we go feed do to so solve supply this chain. Matter? So imagine, imagine a startup that works in concert, and, and the challenge with that is that the infrastructure is predominantly government centric. For instance, a private person cannot run a rail line. If we want to fix our food inefficiencies, fix the rail logistics of food supply. So the farmer in Kwara Namoda finishes, loads his yam, and that rail takes you from Kwara Namoda down to Lagos with stops in Kaduna, stops in Benin, stops in Nibadon, stops in some hotspots, offloads. It solves. 40% of your problem. Because I wonder the, the, the innovation behind us doing a railroad from here to Niger Republic, for instance. And not, not a single railroad will actually connect perhaps the north to so, south, so, so let me tell southeast you, or let me you know, tell you the other bane, parts. And this is deviating a bit, right? Let me tell you the bane of our problem, right, is that government decisions 90% of the time are political decisions. Oh. And political driven decisions with the next election cycle at the back of your mind. <laughs> so right? not be even happy so, to use develop and so so uh, so oftentimes these decisions affect hmm. the outcome, affect what the, the the viability of the results, you know. But we have a food crisis. If we fix our uh, log the logistic supply chain, that crisis will come Just down. like you don't talk for train. So we'll move on now to inside this tech matter now. Health, uh, health is another thing. He health. Right? Uh, many tell people medicine now that's something. Right, many people are sick. So, for instance, um, the other day, the DG of NAVDAC said 50% of the PCL, PC, PSO certificates that, are, that are, are, are brought into this country alongside drugs are fake, which means that 50% of the drugs that are imported into this country are fake. And, 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 and you see, that's a damning, damning revelation, especially to our health. Now, we've got to now start looking at fixing that. Challenges are there. The health and pharma industry is a billion dollar industry. The fitness industry is also a billion dollar industry, right? So having startups, for instance, who are building solutions that will sell health lifestyle, lifestyle um, medicine, hmm. you know, um, access to telemedicine, telemedicine services, hmm. right? Um, and, you know, and all that. But even beyond that, there are small, so I have a couple, some, some young, young startup founders in Kami that I have mentored over time, and all they do is Uber for water. Uber you know, for water? Uber now. for water, Uber for water, this water, you know, this, um, I don't know what they call it. Is it Merua or something they call Merua, it? Merua, Merua. People structure a system where you know you can just use your phone and order water, and they bring. And they bring you know, water using for you. using and the SIM-enabled phones as well as Android. Mm. So even if you don't have, you just text this to text this and tell how many, and you get what you want. You know, just understanding that there are problems everywhere, mm. and in your own little way, finding solutions to it. Where does government come in? Enabling environment, ease of doing business, registration, licensing. Don't stifle people with tax, right? We have a big challenge with multiple taxation, right? And then you have the challenge of um, people paying the same tax in different places, right? Which is wrong. I could pay federal government, I could pay legal states, yeah. for instance. So mm. I know that one of the, one of the mandates of the Oyedele panel is to harmonize our tax. We, Nigeria has no business having over 90 something tax laws. Uh, we, hear say, we, hear say, uh, we hear say some Nigerian businesses, um, they pay great terms within their counterparts, they pay. Uh, of course, of so course, of course. Well. So harmonize the tax laws. We, don't have, we shouldn't have more than five at the, at the, at the, at the maximum, 10. 10 taxes, and then you stratify it as against federal collecting, state collecting, local government collecting, 
you know, and you don't even know which one is going into the coffers of government. Mm. Okay. So that's okay. another thing, right? Um, access to funding, interest rates are over the roof. And so you find that, for instance, the monetary, uh, the, the interest rates have been high at the last count, 26 point something, mm. right? How do you expect a manufacturer to get money at that level? I ain't take And compete with a competitor who is important. Mm. So in a way, when they make um, some products so ABC produce on Nigeria, they, they like say they costly, cost. pass the ones they bring abroad. It's more okay, not okay, again, make we end the church here. Church don't close. We don't end them. So, but you believe say hope they shine. Oh, yeah. Hope they. So it's not about whether there's hope. Mm. This is the only way to remain alive. Okay. All right. Okay. Technology and innovation is the only way you and can remain alive. And that is whether we like them or not. Right. And so right. without technology and innovation, there's no existence. All right. You, we can't go back to analog. You cannot even go back to manual. It's gone. It's not fit for human existence. So tech and innovation. What we need are regulators and a government that understand the speed have manpower that are able to manage and regulate because regulation is very important mm. you heard of an ai robot that killed its operator because it did not like receiving repeated instructions mm -hmm. that's where we are going to with artificial intelligence mm. and i'll say something to you right i have a certification in artificial intelligence in a couple of years machines will now start having lawyers and having rights so <laughs> even in the legal industry, My right? Go get rights. Yeah, so even in the legal industry. That is the tabu I'm getting rights. Even right for me to hold and wear. Yeah, even in the legal industry, right? Uh, lawyers must now even begin to evolve and understand how the legal practice works. Because very soon, right, if you do not understand how to deploy technology and artificial intelligence, mm. you will be obsolete. When I say machines will have rights, a machine should work for a particular number of hours. If it works beyond that amount of hours, it amounts to an abuse. The rights to it, right? But I make it work on Output, stuff like that. These are, that is the future we're seeing. All right. right? Okay. Interesting. And so if you are surrounded by that future, you know that the only way you can be alive is to hold on to this technology, understand it as much as you can, but also make it bespoke to your current reality. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Plenty, plenty. Make we, uh, end, end, the, end the service here. In fact, this one where you talk now, Greece. We don't do the grace inside the service. Thank you so much, Barista Omori. I appreciate you plenty, plenty as you follow me on. Thank you, you don't put me. sense of people head. Eh, who get? Suppose don't hear. In fact, half a word, suppose only enough for the wise. Not be just one word again. I appreciate you. All right, my people. Thank, thank you so you. much. Now, here, and I will go end the matter today uh, for Inside the Good Morning Niger show ex, uh, extra uh my name is precious in i go do with you another time for your tv on a do